It's always sad when an icon passes on, and that's exactly what's happening here. This defender, a piece of history, one of the last ever made. Of course, that's a history that started in the 1940s with the original Land Rovers, now highly collectible vehicles. Richard Bedell, you're a trustee of the Dunsfold collection. Tell me about this car. This is a very interesting car. Although it's part of the Dunsfold collection, I know this car better than any Land Rover because it was in our family. It was our farm Land Rover, and I started driving it when I was eight, which is a long time ago. And of course, the Land Rover became an iconic part of, of the British Army, featuring on every operation from the 1950s onwards. Of course, absolutely. First Land Rovers were ordered in 1949, and uh, the, the Army have in fact refurbished a lot of Land Rovers, which are now 20, 25 years old under the uh, Titanus scheme. But there are Land Rovers tucked away. There are defenders tucked away, ready to be used. And tell me about the exotic military versions, because it, it was redesigned as everything from, from a fire engine through to an ambulance to a light fire support vehicle, all sorts. Goodness, well, you'd go on forever. Uh, the 101 is worth mentioning, which is the flat-fronted, one-tonny uh, Land Rover that was designed with, which had the Range Rover V8 engine, the old Buick V8 engine. As you rightly say, there have been lots of other types of Land Rover. In fact, at one point, somebody in Whitehall thought it would be a very good idea if the British Army had a few two-wheel drive Land Rovers because they wanted some cars, uh, they wanted vehicles that could be used as cars, and they had the spare parts. And so they decided that they'd buy some two-wheel drive Land Rovers, and the two-wheel drive Land Rovers actually cost far more than the four-wheel drive Land Rovers, and they are now probably the rarest of all the Land Rovers around. And of course the Land Rover has always been particularly associated with the special forces who've carried on using it long after the rest of the army is uh, transferred to bigger, heavier vehicles for operational purposes. Yes, very much so. And uh, of course, you know, the, the, the ones that everybody will, uh, will know about are the Pink Panthers, the famous Pink Panthers. And uh, you see one or two of them at, uh, at Land Rover events fitted by the 916 tyres. And people always say, why are they painted pink? And the owners of those vehicles um, take great delight in explaining that the silhouette on the sand is, uh, is reduced and, and in fact, uh, negligible uh, because of the, of the colour of, uh, of that paint. Now, of course, a lot of this uh, exotic, some of the more special Land Rovers from over the decades, you, you helped preserve in the Dunsfold collection. Oh, very much so. We started the Dunsfold collection in 1968 uh, with a, an amphibious Land Rover, amphibious military Land Rover. We've now got 134 pre-production and prototype Land Rovers, Range Rovers, Discoveries in the collection. And it is the biggest uh, collection of Land Rovers in the world and, and unique, uh, irreplaceable. If you had to buy one more Land Rover, you're already a man of, of several, which would it be? I think I'd probably, I think I've just bought one of the very, very last defenders. And uh, I, think, I think that'll probably be the last one that I buy. I bought a brand new one of the last defenders and I think that'll probably see me out.